Dynamics are changing, so we are tending to see more of the dysmenorrhea than previously, maybe 20, 30 years ago. That is Dr. Othaniel Musana's response on the prevalence of a condition that is better told by females. Dr. Musana says though there are no exact statistics about dysmenorrhea, most of the diagnosed women are those that are sexually active. Most of those we are diagnosing are between 23 and 30. And 30. So that age bracket. And many of them will come with dysmenorrhea, either as a primary complaint, or they will come with fertility issues, plus dysmenorrhea. So what may cause them to seek care may not be the dysmenorrhea itself, but it may be fertility. Most women, however, feel uncomfortable discussing their menstrual periods. We ask Dr. Musana about the causes of this condition. For the younger women, those who are in their pubertal years or adolescent years, normally it just tends to be a hormonal issue and uh, they have excessive hormones or hormonal imbalances that will cause them to have strong contractions, cramps, during the periods. If it develops after the first periods, then you tend to think of things like infection, women who have pelvic infections, there is a disorder that we call PID, pelvic inflammatory disorder. The other ones may be swellings within the, within the pelvis, for example if you have fibroids that are entering into your uterine cavity you may have dysmenorrhea, so during the period the, the, the uterus is trying to push out the fibroid, so you may have excessive pain together with possible excessive bleeding at some times. Dr. Musana says that menstrual cramps are normal, but one will need to consult a doctor if the pain is severe or comes along with other effects like nausea and diarrhea. Every month we are doing about uh, 10 such procedures out of about 120 women. And still most of those, we are finding out that it's actually the endometriosis. Endometriosis means that um, there is a endometrium. Endometrium is the layer that a woman sheds off every month and it grows in the uterus. If it grows outside the uterine cavity, say on the ovaries, on the intestines. He says at that stage, such women will always need strong painkillers to control their pain, which are administered via injections or drips. Such women will come to you in very severe pain. They cannot work and uh, this pain is is very disabling for the woman. So that is the, the type we are now tending to see as the women grow older. The pains are always preceded by premenstrual syndrome, symptomized by an engorgement of breasts, painful nipples, body swelling and nausea, among others. And eventually the treatment of choice would be to remove the uterus and the ovaries. So that's one of the effects for such issues if you don't deal with them or diagnose them early. However, there are ways of managing endometriosis, some of which are natural and home remedies. If you have hormonal imbalances that lead to the problem, when you get pregnant, pregnancy tends to stabilize the hormones so that when you give birth eventually, most of the women who have primary hormonal disorders, the hormones stabilize out and in that way the pain goes away. But normally we advise them that when they are ready to conceive, not uh, conceiving as a as a treatment. If the infection has caused other complications like damaging the tubes, then you may require to do surgery to relieve such a problem. If it's a problem like endometriosis, then you may require to give the woman hormones. If the painkillers fail to work, then we may proceed to the hormones. The hormones they include, include the normal contraceptive pills which have also been shown to be very helpful. Women tend to use a, either cold compresses, they pack ice and, and that may numb the pain for some time, or they may tend to use warm compresses. They either get a towel which is soaked in something warm and then use it to apply to the abdomen. Uh, others may do activities to so distract them. Dr. Musana says endometriosis causes mental, medical and social health issues to women. Endometriosis also will tend to cause infertility if it is very severe because it will damage the tubes, it will damage the ovaries. 
but also with dysmenorrhea, depending on the cause, if it is infection and endometriosis, sometimes those women cannot have sex because the sex is very painful. So such women may eventually just either lose the relationship or they lose their fertility or both. But also depression, if somebody is in pain all the time and there seems to be no cure or no answer for her pain, many of those women will become mentally depressed. They will lose jobs. No employer understands why you have to be away for five or six days every month because you keep claiming I have pain during the periods. Your spouse may not understand why you have to deny them sex because I have pain. If they are young girls, they will tend to drop out of school or have many days out of school because of the pain. He urged women with this condition to seek medical attention. Many of the causes are treatable. And if we cannot alleviate your pain, at least we can control it so that you're able to meet your day-to-day -day obligations. Walter Mwesije, NTV.